All right, to get into some physiology a little bit, some of the things you may hear about, it says the following terms are used to describe the volume of air, okay, volume. So air in, air out. So these are some of the things, I don't know where my little, okay, there it is. These are some of the things we hear about. Um, so, it, okay, so it really helps to see a picture and there will be a picture later. Uh, Cause sometimes when you're doing a test, you can actually see the volumes, like what can you take in? What can you take out? So what are they? What do they mean? Okay, tidal volume. So the air, that, that just right now, as you're sitting here and just breathing, those little, you know, subconsciously breathing, that's tidal volume. It says the amount of air in a single inspiration, expiration, approximately 500 milliliters of air during normal, quiet breathing. So as you're sitting here, normal, quiet breathing, 500 milliliters, what does that mean? Okay, again, a soda bottle is two liters, which is like 2,000 milliliters. So cut that in half, that would be 1,000 milliliters. Cut that in half, that would be 500 milliliters. So as you're breathing right now, in and out, tidal volume. Expiratory reserve, expiratory, so you're going to exhale. It says the amount of air that can be forcefully expired after respiration. So imagine your normal tidal volume, and then you exhale. Then you can exhale more. All that air, you can exhale extra. So 1,000 to 1,200 milliliters. Now, can you ever exhale everything out of your um, lungs? The answer is no, okay, no. You cannot exhale everything out. If you did, the alveoli would collapse, okay? So you always have some stuff left over. It's called the residual volume. We're gonna get to there, okay. Inspiratory reserve. So imagine your normal tidal volumes. It's like how much more can you take in? Okay, the amount of air that can be forcefully inspired over ab uh, a normal inspiration. Okay, so imagine you're breathing, and then I told you stop, stop, and then go. Take in a lot more. That's inspiratory reserve. Now it says approximately three thousand six hundred. People are different. Some people have much bigger capacities. Like I remember going to a conference and I was with a friend and they tried it. They had 7,000 milliliters. He was a really big guy. He had 7,000 milliliters. So people are different in their volumes. If you have a little petite woman, you know, residual. That's the idea of if you exhale all the air that you can, you'll always have some left over. That's the residual volume. Amount of air remaining in the lungs after maximal expiration. Vital capacity, the volume of air that can be exhaled after maximal inspiration. So if you get, and then all the stuff you could take out, that's vital capacity. Residual volume of air that remains, total lung, maximal volume of air after maximal inspiration. So these are things that, that um, you know, doctors, um, can or or you know physiologist uh, respiratory um, technicians etc can measure to see what's happening to a person. All right, so respiration vital sign of course. Now, do you think every second like let me inhale, let me exhale, psh, let me inhale, let me exhale? Of course not, right? So it's autonomic, right? Part of your brain that is continuously monitoring that. It's called the medulla oblongata. It's at the base of your brain. Um, medulla oblongata and the pons um, of the central nervous system regulate control respiration. So we don't think of it, we're not conscious of it, but the, that area of the brain is incredibly critical because it's um, controlling respiration. It's also controlling um, heart, uh, right? So here, medulla oblongata um, via the phrenic nerve, right, is going to control respiration. And then here, it's talking about inhalation, um, you know, so there are intercostals, there would be muscles between the costae, there are, there's the diaphragm that's going to help with inhalation, and then exhalation. So yes, we already talked about that. Respiratory rates, right, differ throughout life. So newborns, they breathe quickly. <laughs> and so they have tiny little, you know, um, volumes. So they're breathing kind of fast. And as we get older, 
right? We slow down. And then as we get older, older, right? And we slow down some more, okay? Now, the rest of the chapter is talking about uh, disorders. Um, they This starts on page, um, let's see, 367. Again, just like before, there's a table with, word, um, well, prefixes in regards to the respiratory system that can be super helpful. And then there are issues that people may have with respiratory system. So here, <clears throat> asthma. Asthma is nasty. You know, I think we just, we get used to it. We hear about people having asthma, but it truly can be debilitating. It can be life-threatening. Um, so what's happening, right? So here's a picture of a boy um, who had an attack and who was having a hard time breathing, so ended up in the emergency room, right? So it says uh, acute exacerbations of asthma can require man management in the emergency department. The child is placed in the sitting position to facilitate respiratory effort. So what's happening? Um, so there are allergens, there are triggers. This is on page uh, 370. This is a really cool uh, picture. It shows all the things that can be triggers for people that have asthma. Cold air can be a trigger. Sleep apnea. Um, of course, allergens, you know, pet dander, flower pollen. Here it says infections. So, you know, right now with um, COVID-19 and with the coronavirus, and they're talking about people with, um, you know, uh, underlying conditions. So if someone has an asthma, already they have this condition where what can happen is the lungs, okay? So here are the, bron uh, the bronchioles, right? And then here are the alveoli. So this is a tube where air passes through, okay? When someone has an asthma attack, look at this. The tube constricts. So imagine this tube is what's carrying air. And if the tube constricts, now airflow can't get through. And can you imagine the panic somebody would have? And then there's that characteristic wheezing when someone has an asthma attack. So in this case, if someone's ill, right, and then there's extra mucus, and they're having a hard time breathing in the first place, that can cause an attack, right? So here it says infections, common cold, influenza, that can trigger an attack. So they're at that, they're more vulnerable to having these issues. Um, air pollution, occupational dust, certain types of drugs, household products. So there are many things that can cause an asthma attack. And again, right? So then um, the inhalers, the bronchial dilators, they, they relax the spasms because there's spasms here, right? Smooth muscle contractions. And so when someone has an inhaler, it relaxes it. It opens up the tubes. And truly, asthma can be life-threatening. It can kill a person. Um, so they have to be really careful with that. Um, here, they, the bronchoscope during a bronchoscopy, right? Visual, so, so putting a tube down so they can look, right? Viewing channel, light source, biopsy forceps so they could take, if they want to take a sample, people can get lung cancer, right? And so they can look through there. Here, uh, this is called croup. Right, it says important changes. The epiglottis swells. Remember the epiglottis? That's the the that little trap door. If it swells, now there's going to be issues with air getting through. Trachea swells, right, causing restriction. So, um, in the book, they have it on page three seventy two. They say there's it, it's characterized by obstruction of the larynx, so having a hard time getting the air in there. It says a barking um, cough. Dyspnea, so dyspnea is literally means difficulty breathing. Um, hoarseness, um, yeah, so so not, not a good thing to have. Okay, so, all right. Here, cystic fibrosis. You guys have probably heard of cystic fibrosis. It's a genetic disorder. Um, so if they get those genes, right? And it's a problem with mucus. It's a problem with sodium chloride. Um, so, so there's different ways of testing for it. Look at this little kid, cutie patootie, right? And they're using a sweat test so they can look at, the, it says, 
Um, evaluation of a child for cystic fibrosis with sweat chloride tests. Sweat is being collected and they're the wrappings for later, later analysis. So cystic fibrosis causes all kinds of issues, but they have it here in the respiratory chapter because a person who has cystic fibrosis gets thick mucus in the lungs. And again, if there's thick mucus, now there's a problem with the air passing through the oxygen carbon dioxide. So what they do for a person with cystic fibrosis is they have to massage. They massage them, they tap them. Sometimes they get onto a machine to help get the mucus out and they have to do it daily, okay? So it says, um, you know, it's an inherited disease that affects the entire body, causing progressive disability, often early death. So it's not, and we don't have a cure for it. So this child is actually being diagnosed. Emphysema. You've probably heard of emphysema. Maybe you've heard of like barrel chestedness. So if you've ever seen people walking around, and again, these are these pre uh dispose of pre not pre-existing conditions but you know where people can be susceptible especially now with COVID-19 so if you've ever seen people walking around with oxygen tanks okay it could be from emphysema well what happens imagine if a person has years and years of smoking the alveoli get damaged look at this they're kind of bulging out and so the surface area is actually decreased and so they have a harder time getting the oxygen again through to their blood. So that's why they might be on an oxygen tank, okay? Because they need extra oxygen to get through to get into the blood. So here it says chronic pulmonary disease in which the alveolar become distended, alveolar walls become damaged and destroyed. That's what you could see in this picture here, making it difficult to exhale air from the lungs. It, it is included in group of diseases, asthma, bronchitis, emphysema, called chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Primary cause is, drum roll, cigarette smoking, right? Cigarette smoking is so bad. Um, so they show that. And again, imagine if a person that already has these issues, already has problems getting that oxygen through. If they get some kind of infection, now it's harder for them to get that oxygen. Um, here, right, they're talking about the Heimlich maneuver. If someone's choking, so putting that pressure on to dislodge whatever is obstructing the airway, right? So this is if they're standing, if they're laying down. Uh, here they're talking about the sinuses. I truly like this picture because it talks about all the issues that can happen, right? So chronic sinusitis. Some people have that, acute sinusitis, secondary bacterial infection, it could be from an allergy, it could be viral. Here, otitis media, they're talking about ear infection, right? That can happen. Laryngitis, if you've ever, if you've ever heard someone talk like this, you know, or, or sometimes it could be so bad that they can't talk at all. And so the vocal cords get really swollen and can't vibrate and cause that uh, sound. Oops. Here we're talking about asthma, different types of asthma, not asthma, excuse me. Uh, pneumonia, pneumonia, not asthma, different types of pneumonia. So it says inflammation of the lung caused by bacteria, viruses, fungi, chemical in inhalants. So different types, right? But it's inflammation. And again, if there's inflammation in those little alveoli, now we're having issues with gas exchange, right? Affects three to four million people. Um, it says initial diagnosis through auscultation of the chest. So listening, right? They're listening to the air. Pneumothorax. Ooh, if someone gets whatever, a puncture, there's, there's, um, there is a lining here, there's a lining here, and there's fluid here, and that's a pleural cavity, okay? If there's a puncture, the, the whole way we get air in, air out has to do with volume changes. If there's a puncture, then the pressure here and the pressure here is the same, and the lung literally collapses, okay? And that's what pneumothorax is. So sometimes someone can get in an accident, someone can get stabbed, um, and then they get pneumothorax. Luckily, we have two lungs, okay? So this side will take over, hopefully, hopefully, okay? Okay, we're gonna stop here and then we'll continue and we'll be done with our last video.